Hey there, it's Tracy Dab here up from your VA Mentor. This is take three. I don't know what's happening, but Facebook keeps kicking me off. It says something about, I don't know. Anyway, I think everything's fine. I'm looking around. I'm all connected. My internet's okay. Um, and But anyway, so for some reason, I'm going to try this again. So my apologies if you're listening. I'll delete the other ones anyway. So this morning, thank you. Welcome to our, our Monday Facebook Live. Um, this morning we're talking about choosing your services and um, this is a really important thing to do whenever you are starting your business because a lot of people go about it the wrong way. A lot of VAs, uh, brand new VAs particularly, uh, go about it the wrong way. So I'm going to give you a few tips about what to do around that. Um, a lot of people think that they have to learn something in order to be a VA and that may well be if you are um, you know if you don't have a lot of administrative experience if you're younger typically what I see in the VA world is you know people who are sort of um, you know probably the 30 to 50 age range but if you're lower than that or higher than that it's totally okay um, and maybe you don't have a ton of administrative experience then you might want to go someplace like VA Classroom Freelance, you learn some things. Um, I know there's the um, um, college uh, programs that you can also take. Um, and so that's totally fine. You know, you can do that kind of thing. But in general, if you have an administrative career background and you are looking to start a VA business, I mean, you typically don't need a lot of training in that, okay? So you start with where you are. And that's sort of my number one point today is, always, always begin with where you are and what you know how to do. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot of us are, you know, most of us are, are support professionals, right? That's what we are in the administrative role. And so we're not often very accustomed to uh, doing sales, selling ourselves, that kind of thing. One of the, the big um, issues that I hear from the VAs that I talk to is that that's the thing that they're worried about. They're worried about selling themselves in their business. And so you have to be able to give yourself the benefit of being able to um, being able to um, sell a service that you're very comfortable doing. So, for instance, say if um, I provide general administrative services, which a lot of us do or have, in you know, some people have. Uh, sort of settled into marketing or bookkeeping or or uh, HR or that type of thing, you know, maybe meeting planning, that type of thing, whatever your particular specialties are. But say, for instance, I have uh, provided general administrative services. When I'm out talking to potential clients and they ask me what I can do, if I want to offer social media services to them or graphic services or whatever it is, um, if I want to offer something like that to them and I don't have a lot of experience in it, I'm going to stumble over my words. It's going, it happens all the time. And so what the client sees on the other end is somebody who doesn't really convey confidence in terms of, you know, the services that they can provide. They don't make you, you're not making them feel very comfortable that you can look after the things that you need to look after for them. But if you were talking about something that you had a lot of experience in, like, uh, like I say, if you you know worked in uh, in bookkeeping or in marketing or or whatever it was that your particular roles were, meeting planning is always a big one. Database stuff. Whenever you know people are are first getting started, those service offerings kind of come up. If you actually get into a networking conversation with somebody and you are talking about something that you know a lot about, even if you don't have a lot of virtual experience and that kind of thing, what you're saying to them is going to make a lot more sense to them. So. If you start talking about, you know, um, and again, like I'll, you know, if you have some experience in the travel industry, I'll say, let's let's go for there. So if you have some experience in the travel industry and you start talking to somebody about that in a situation, talk to a travel consultant and you're looking to do support for them, you can ask them valid questions about how do you do this? What booking system do you use? Um, you know, where do you find your clients? What kind of things do you do? I don't know what, you know, travel people do, but because you have some experience in it, you can ask them valid questions about their business. It becomes something that they, uh, they realize then that you have some knowledge and expertise in. And so the conversation flows a lot better. If you were to go to that travel person and you were to talk to them about their Facebook page and you should be doing this and you should be doing this, um, you know, based on based on your what you want to be selling to them, it would be a jumpier conversation. Okay, so what I always say is start with where you are when, especially when you're really just beginning in your business, or even if you're at the point where you've been trying to get clients for a long time and you're not having some success, you're not having the success that you want. Just stop right now and think about where you are, what you know how to do. If you have my ebook, which most of you do um, from the group, 
um, if you haven't, go pick it up. Um, do, do the skills inventory exercise, okay? Because it really does show you what you know how to do, not related to your last job or the job before that, but all the things that you've learned. When I did my skills inventory um, originally, which was in like 2009, I think, um, when I first did, I, I went back to all of the courses that I had taken. I had taken like how to deal with difficult people. I had taken a marketing workshop that I really enjoyed. So write down all of the things that you have learned and that you, um, you know, and then the jobs that I had done. I had done a whole lot of different jobs and I had done a whole lot of different tasks. So I just started writing down all those things and I, I realized, you know, my value for one thing, but I realized all the things that I could draw on to create services for my business. And that's what I want you to do as well. I want you to be able to, um, I want you to be able to look at what it is you know how to do and how you can build a business around that because those are the things that you've done that you can talk to people about. You can get clients a lot faster whenever you are confident in the services that you're going to offer. Get some revenue coming into your business and whatever that is at, like I say, I started doing you know bookkeeping. I, I came from uh, doing some financial work for a restaurant, so a restaurant um, chain. And so I kind of naturally moved into some bookkeeping data entry and that kind of thing whenever I first got started, but that helped me get my feet under me in my business. And I earned some money and then I went to VA Classroom and I started taking internet marketing, I took social media, I took virtual event certification, I took a lot of different training so that I could then guide the, my business into you know, the path that I wanted it to go on. And that's what I want you to do as well. I want you to start with where you are now, get some money coming in, get the confidence of doing some networking, doing some marketing, um, you know, doing some client work. And then um, then you can make goals to, you can set goals to, to direct your business in any way that you want. So um, do what you know is super important. And I'll talk, um, I'll give you an example in just a minute of being able to talk to people. Um, and then I want you to schedule some training. Okay, so that's the third thing. So start with where you are, do what you know best, and schedule your training because you can always grow your business. So if you want to, say if you get into the travel industry for, for argument's sake, and um, that's, those are the people that you want to serve those are the people that you want to support with your business, um, then you can take some training to stay on trend, right? You can keep on top of their industry trends and you can learn the things that you need to learn that are valid to their business if that's what you want to do. If you want to get out of that industry like I did, I didn't want to stay in bookkeeping for sure, um, then you can go and plan your training for something else. So that's really, really important and I want you to be able to, to do that. So, um, But I wanted to just circle back on, I have a, a story that I love to tell and it's about um, a consult that I did with, with, and she ended up being one of my clients. And we were talking about exactly about trying to network and trying to talk to people about what you do and trying to sell yourself, right? And so um, I had her on the phone. And if you, so if you're struggling with this, this is what I want you to hear what this story is about, okay? So I had her on the phone and she was trying to sort of let me know, you know, what her value was. I was asking her like, you know, what do you do for people? How can you, um, you know, how can you help them? What, why should they hire you was the question I got to and she was totally stumped, she didn't know. So that was really tough for her, right? And that's the challenge. And this is why I say, when you are choosing your services, it's really important to nail them and to really know what it is you're doing because you, you can't struggle when you're in conversations with people. First of all, if you're out networking, you're taking your time to do that. It's valuable time and you wanna make sure that you do the best thing you can at it. So when I was on the phone with this girl, she was really struggling. She didn't know, I don't know why they would hire me and I'm not sure and I'm terrible at selling myself and she kept going on and on. So I said, okay, her husband, I happen to know, was um, a business owner as well. And so I said, tell me about your husband's business. And so she started to tell me, okay, he does this and this and this. Very matter of factly, you know, and, and I said, um, so why should people, you know, hire him? And she was able to talk about her husband's business in the way that, you know, he was the best at what he did and, and you know, he's dedicated, he has education, he has training, um, you know, he's local, he's this and that. Anyway, she gave me a million reasons why people could work with her, with her husband. And I don't know if she really knew where I was going with the conversation, and so I said to her, okay, so you see how easy that was. So the whole um, inflection in her voice and everything like that completely changed whenever she was talking about someone else, right? So the selling part was not hard and that's what I said to her. I said, you can sell very, very well. You just need to find those words for yourself, you know, and, and your own business. And sometimes that means that you can, you know, pair up with somebody who knows how you do your work and that kind of thing. You can get an accountability partner or um, certainly you can, you know, work with a coach, but it's, it's not always necessary. You can just kind of talk to a colleague about it and do that exercise and be able to, you know, 
as soon as you aren't sure of your value, ask somebody else about it and you'll be able to start to formulate those words that you can then use in your conversations with people because it's re you have to hear them first and you have to be able to say them. And when you are you know, when you start with services that are you know really solid and that you know how to do really well that part's not a big deal you know if you can say to people well you know why will you why should i work with you well because i know how to use this system and that system and you know uh, here's a couple of of and you can tell a story a story is always good right when you're talking to people in a networking situation and so um you know you can just you can just say, you know, I helped a client do this one time, whatever that was. And you can actually have a conversation. You can build up that confidence in the client's mind or the potential client's mind whenever you're having that, uh, that conversation so that they know why they should be hiring you. So choosing your services is super essential. Start with where you are. Do what you know really, really well. Um, and then whether or not that's what you want to stay in, um, you know, then you schedule your training. Those are the three things in terms of choosing your service. Schedule your training to get you where you want to go in your business. So I hope you found that helpful today. I apologize for the technical difficulties. I'm glad this last one worked. And uh, I'll delete those other two and, and we'll just keep this one up. So I would love to hear what your services are. Leave them in the comments. I think they'll be below. Leave them in the comments below or just post to the group and let us know what you're doing, what you, uh, you know, what your services are or what you want them to be and kind of how you're doing on that networking and how you're doing on that uh, marketing, market, that networking conversation type of thing. And I'll get into a lot more networking as we do these lives as well. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week. Take care.